Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Micro Investor, where we do technical analysis, price predictions, and news updates on many different cryptocurrencies every single day. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin, but we're going to be talking about some history with Bitcoin and just looking at some previous price history. And of course, we're going to be talking about the halving with Bitcoin, which is very important to actually talk about this because every every so a little bit less than every four years, there's a halving with Bitcoin where the, uh, where the block reward gets reduced in half. So there's, there's a... Um, there's a d depreciation within Bitcoin as far as um, as time goes on. So when it comes to Bitcoin, looking at it right now, we're seeing history for the most most part just repeating itself. When we look at the having the Bitcoin had back in July of uh, 2016. It took a little while before Bitcoin's price went up significantly and it had a big rally, which we can see that that from the having on July 9th, 2016, Bitcoin's price $660 to uh, Bitcoin's price in November, December of 2017, which is uh, was actually higher than where we're at right now, or within the same price range, I should say, from where we're at, we are right now within Bitcoin's price. It even went upwards around the price of uh, $20,000. Then we saw a pullback within the price with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's price did end up coming down pretty significantly. So had a big bull run and then it, th things went a bit bearish for a while. And then we had another halving with Bitcoin on May 11th, 2020. And at that time, Bitcoin's price was above $9,000. And then shortly after that, especially as we led into 2021, um, Bitcoin had this big rally. But another interesting thing is, where was Bitcoin's price in 2020 at this time? Well, it was at the same price in, uh, in November and December of 2020. It's, it's been within the same price range as Bitcoin has been this year in the month of November and December, which is uh, kind of ironic to think about because of the uh, massive run that we had with Bitcoin that ended up following right after um, uh, that, right after the end of 2020, where in 2021, Bitcoin's price had uh, had a significant rally. We ended up seeing it go to its all-time high at a price that was just a little bit under $70,000. And now what we're seeing is Bitcoin's price having a big reduction and coming down, losing about 75% of its value. Now, something we're talking about is the weekly moving averages of Bitcoin. I don't really hear anybody talk about the weekly moving averages of Bitcoin. So looking at the 200 week moving average, this is the key one that I want to talk about here, where you can see back in uh, 2020, Bitcoin had managed to actually go below that very briefly for a moment there. And then it spent the rest of 2020 and all of 2021 above the 200 week moving average. It wasn't until Bitcoin's price had uh, fallen below that in the month of May of 2022 that it actually ended up uh, managing to go below that. It really fell below that in June of 2022. And uh, since then, it has not managed to actually go above that. And not only that, same as for our, all of our other weekly moving averages, our 20 week moving average, Bitcoin was just recently making an attempt to actually go above that just before the FTX fallout, which now has even more distance created below the 20 week moving average. So there's a lot that really needs to be done here. We're seeing this crisscross within our 50, 50 week moving average, which is coming close to crossing over our 200 week moving average. We got a lot of things to really look at here with Bitcoin. But I think that, that as time goes on here and uh, Bitcoin manages to actually start seeing some gains, start seeing some recovery here, which I'm gonna turn this back over to the daily chart real quick, that I think that Bitcoin will manage to actually start to a breakthrough some things here. So right now, Bitcoin's still above that 20-day moving average. It needs to work up to that 50-day moving average, which isn't a, a price that's that high. It just needs to go to a price of $17,800 to be able to attempt to break break through that and get on the other side of that. So let's say a good price would be $18,000 for Bitcoin to actually be able to do such a thing. This is, these are the steps that we need to take with Bitcoin to actually start seeing Bitcoin's price to recover from the FTX fallout. But not only that, of course, to recover from where it was at within this entire falling wedge that it was in. This falling wedge that the Bitcoin had been in since its all-time high, since November of 2021, where it had come down within these five waves. And we've possibly completed the fifth wave. We're creating distance from this wedge. Now, we're creating distance away from it. 
And if this is that sign that we need, that this is the start of a new pattern, a new pattern in the works that look a lot like Bitcoin in the end of 2020 and uh, beginning of 2021, where we're seeing the pattern moving upwards instead of the pattern moving downwards. Hopefully we're entering that transition now. Now, since we're talking about Bitcoin over years here, um, this article here from CryptoSlate.com is very interesting. Over 66% of the total Bitcoin supply hasn't moved in the last one year, setting a record. The amount of Bitcoin that has not been moved out of wallets over a given period determines Bitcoin's illiquid supply. As all bear market trends continue affecting all major coins, and Bitcoin's 60% decline from the start of the year since July of 2022, there has been little change in its illiquid supply. 66% of Bitcoin circulating supply, an estimated 12.26 million Bitcoin, hasn't moved for a year, according to Glassnode data. This level is the highest number of illiquid Bitcoin supply ever recorded. Now we get some more interesting. As per previous Glassnode studies, 8.55 million Bitcoin, or 45% of the circulating supply, hasn't moved in two years, while 7.22 million Bitcoin, or 38%, hasn't moved in three years. In addition, when we zoom out to the last 12 years, it can be seen that the illiquid supply decreases in bull markets because many holders take profits, while in bear markets, it rises because many are holding for the long run. So all interesting stuff. Now, Bitcoin needs to work its way up to overtake that that 50-day moving average and uh, just start to gain some traction here and get back to where it was before the whole FTX fallout. I think that that this whole FTX situation has really hurt Bitcoin a lot. I think that we probably would have seen Bitcoin closer to the range of $30,000 by now, I would think. But if we have completed a fifth wave and we are creating this distance here from within this falling wedge pattern, that this next run, which could be who knows for Bitcoin, uh, to start making some some gains, uh, I think there's a lot of potential there. And I think that even as we think that Bitcoin uh, has a little bit of a rally this next time, that probably won't be the big rally that we're going to get after the halving of 2024. At that time, I think that if we see history repeat itself, that bull run is going to have a lot of potential. So, um, so with Bitcoin right now, since it's been at the same price back in back in 2017 in november and december of 2017 it's been at this price back in november and december of 2020 i think that it's just a matter in time till bitcoin starts to uh, gain some traction here and starts to uh slowly make some gains here but it's going to be time of course until we get there but i think that the future for it is uh is going to be absolutely amazing so anyways i just want to make a little bit of a different video today and just talk about this stuff so i'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions about this what do you guys think where do you guys see bitcoin w within these next two years i'd like to know so that being said please a like share comment subscribe i talk about bitcoin and ethereum every single day on this channel and many other altcoins as well thank you all for watching i'll see you in the next one